baby crying. I thought I heard him. Yeah, he's okay. Relax. I was just in there. He's awful. He's worse than he was last night. Oh, well, now, that's normal with Burns, huh? I know that's what the doctor said. Maeve, do you think he's gonna be okay? Oh, of course I do, dear. You, on the other hand, look a lot better. Thank you. I feel better. Rested. Me too. I'm glad. I'm gonna go check on him anyway. Oh, darling, I'm glad to see you and Dee making such a good effort. It's better, Ma. I'm sorry little John had to get hurt to make it happen. How's Da? I haven't huh. seen him this morning. I haven't the slightest idea. He hightailed it out of here at the crack of dawn. Well, I guess that means he's feeling better anyway, huh? Oh, he's fine. Finelli just knocked the wind out of him, that was all. But with one thing and another, there sure was a lot of excitement around here last night. Huh? Oh, it's a total disgrace. I'm glad I missed it. If you'd been here, it wouldn't have happened. I wonder. Your father doesn't seem to be paying any attention to anything I say lately. Well, if Bob and I had been on the spot... I shudder to think what would have happened. Finelli, you wouldn't be walking around too comfortably this morning. <laughs> any word from Mary? She spent the night at Jill's. She called to let us know where she was. She didn't go back to himself, then, huh? No, well, she says she's thinking of getting an apartment. I think it's probably high time, but... Your father, of course, is hoping she'll move back in here. I wouldn't count on <laughs> You think uh, I should go over to Jill's and uh, see if there's anything I can do? Uh, is there any, any help I can give Mary? To Jill's? Oh, no, darling. I don't think there's anything for you to do there now. You know, Ma, last night was the first time in months Dee and I felt comfortable with each other. We weren't angry. We weren't nursing our respective grudges. We were just together and worrying about little John. Well, it's a step. Maybe you can build on it, hmm? Yeah, maybe. Oh, the baby he must be in pain. It'd be a lot worse if Dee hadn't poured cold water on him. I, I was kind of surprised she thought of it. Is Sheila a nurse? I don't know. I don't really know anything about her. Except that she's been a good deal of help to Dealey lately. You know, I was thinking maybe, maybe we should invite her over. <laughs> sure. You can cook her a Chinese dinner. <laughs> oh, that'll be the day. <laughs> no, I was thinking of serving something a little more exotic, like meatloaf. Oh, Ma, we had meatloaf last night. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're looking for fancy cooking, I'm afraid, young man, you're going to have to go out. You know, that's not a bad idea. Why don't you take Dee out to dinner? I'll stay with the babe. Tonight I was to meet Bob at campaign headquarters and uh, plan our strategy for the primary. Oh, Bob can fill in business meeting with other matters until you get there. Go on, Dee would appreciate it. Mm, I don't know. I guess I could. Dee's been such a good girl. She's been trying. She deserves a little special attention, hmm? I know she does. You realize you'd be stuck with a fussy baby. Oh, we'll get along just fine. Thanks, Ma. I'll think about it. General Hospital. Jake suffered a catastrophic head injury. He's gone. No, no. As a family grieves. I'm Jake Weber's real father, and I barely knew him. The search for the killer begins. What kind of a person hits a little kid and keeps on going? We found the driver of the car. Oh, no, this is crazy. Now, only one question matters. Who hit my son? General Hospital. Weekdays on ABC. Weeknights on SoapNet. 
dogs all across America are now begging to go for a walk because now there's the amazing Mesh Comfy Control Harness that puts a smile on their face. Unlike collars that apply inhumane pressure to your pet's neck, it's really <laughs> agonizing and may cause injury as your pet pulls even harder. The Comfy Control Harness sends control signals to the chest and body, does not hurt the neck. So now you and your dog can both enjoy an easy, controlled, comfortable walk. Unlike some harnesses that need to be buckled and adjusted correctly or the dog is not comfortable. The Comfy Control Harness is a conforming mesh vest that slips right on. Custom adjusts in seconds. Then just clip on the matching five-foot leash and you're ready for a secure, stylish, comfortable walk. Its soft, conforming, open-weave construction allows cooling airflow, does not constrict the neck. I've been training dogs for over 20 years. What most dog owners don't know is that unless their pet is properly trained, more than likely they will pull due to opposition reflex. The Comfy Control Harness puts pressure evenly on the pet's chest, no choking. Dogs instinctively respond. This harness is the best way to train puppies right into adulthood. The strong yet soft mesh lets your energetic pet enjoy maximum unrestricted movement for fun playtime. And it's available for dogs of every size. Get the Comfy Control Harness with matching five-foot leash starting at only $10. Call now and find out about free shipping. And as a bonus, we'll double the offer. You'll receive a second Comfy Control Harness. Plus, you'll also receive the Crazy Critter. Just pay separate processing. Look, dogs everywhere go crazy for the plush stuffing free crazy critter. That's right, you'll get two comfy control harnesses with matching five foot leashes and a crazy critter. An incredible $50 value all for only $10. Remember, call right now and find out about free shipping. Call 1-800-970-6486 and get your comfy control harness and free leash. Today's orders also get a bonus second set and the crazy critter. So call 1-800-970-6486. That's 1-800-970-6486. Call now. Look, I understand that Mr. Levine is presenting evidence to the grand jury and can't be reached. I just want you to tell him that Jillian Coleridge phoned. Oh, yeah, he knows who I am. I'm Dr. Bolak's attorney. Now, look, you tell him that I've read this morning's paper and I am shocked and angry. Yes, that's right, at the interview. Now, my client is a prominent physician in this city. And Mr. Levine was unprofessional, not to say unforgivable what he did. I mean, subjecting my client to that kind of publicity before an indictment's even been handed down? No, look, you just wait a minute. Now, you tell him if the grand jury does hand down an indictment, we would appreciate if Mr. Levine would spare us the, uh, the drama of a public formal arrest. I mean, my client is not going to hop a plane to South America. He will present himself voluntarily, and I will accompany him. Now, all Mr. Levine has to do is get in touch with me at my office. Now, do you have all of that? Well, that's terrific. Did you see this? I glanced at it. Garbage. And that is a nice word for it. I mean, just listen to this. Evidence has been presented to the grand jury indicating the probability of foul play, and the investigation is being vigorously pursued. However, we're not ready to hand down an indictment just yet. That is how lawyers get ulcers. Didn't you expect it? Not interviews in the paper, I did not, while the grand jury's in session. I did. Ah, oh, it's a major ethical question in medicine today. Where does life end? Chill, people want to know. This is propaganda for the prosecution. And Seneca, from here on in, it is going to be rough going. I'm expecting that. Boy, I just don't understand Levine. I mean, he seemed like such a nice guy when I met him. I mean, he said himself he didn't want to prosecute. I mean, he even said it was pointless to deprive the world of a fine doctor. Now suddenly he's out for blood. Jill, he's just doing his job. Too well, much too well. I mean, he didn't have to move this fast. He didn't have to give interviews in the paper. You know, I have this nasty feeling that he's trying to make his reputation on this case. Boy, he didn't seem like the type when I met him. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. You understand, I'm a little paranoid. I thought lawyers were supposed to be. <laughs> Tell me, if there is an indictment, when do you think it'll be handed down? In a day or so. What happens then? Well, the judge will set bail. Or else release you on your own recognizance. Look, they're not going to treat you like a mugger. Is the charge really going to be murder in the first degree? <sighs> Seneca, listen to me. I spoke to the lawyer that went down to the grand jury with Bucky. And he was not encouraging. Murder one is a, uh, a distinct possibility.
How's he doing? Frank, he's so patient. He's breaking my heart. He's got blisters all over his back. Don't worry, they'll go away. What if they leave scars? They won't. Pat said they wouldn't. He was 99% sure. Did he uh, eat anything? Have a piece of toast. That's all. He wasn't very hungry. Well, his old man is. Yeah, leave it here, would you? Aren't you going to have any breakfast? No time. I got to get through this, uh, all the rest of this, before I get to the office. I was supposed to read it last night. I'm sorry. Hey, look. I know sometimes it looks like my priorities get a little mixed up, but I do know what they are. Sure. Okay. So, don't blame yourself anymore, huh? It was an accident, and you did everything possible. Yeah. Hey. Would you like to go out to dinner tonight? I can't. Uh, I take care of little John. Uh, mother will stay with him. I don't know if I can. I'm still a little shaky. I don't know if I can handle too many people. Could you handle me? It's not a political dinner? <laughs> I swear. Not a politician in sight. <laughs> Come on. It'll be good for us. Bob's going to be down at campaign headquarters anyway, so he'll hold the fort. I bet they don't even miss me. Okay. Just okay? Oh, I didn't mean it that way. It's just that uh, it's been a long time, that's all. I know. I feel dumb. It's like we're going together or something. We are going together. Where would you like to go? I don't know. Why don't you decide? Uh, just no pizza. Uh, anything but pizza. Oh. Hello? Hi, how are you? Oh, hi, Sheila. Look, I'm in the middle of something. Can I uh, call you back? Frank? Uh-huh. Well, I see. Um, well, listen, you better tell Sheila how the baby's doing. Oh, yeah. He seems fine, Sheila. No, I, he's not fine at all. Uh, he's been crying, and there are blisters all over his back. But other than that, he's OK. Thank you. No, oh, that's good. Uh, Delia. Listen, I have to see you. It's very important. Well, I, um... Sheila, I gotta go. No, don't hang up. Just tell her thanks for me, that's all. Frank says to thank you for all of your help. Well, you tell him he's welcome. She says sure. Okay, Sheila, I'm here. Now, what's the matter? I miss you a lot. Would you like to tell me what's the matter? Okay, okay, I understand. Now, <clears throat> you see, I've got this cold. Well, I, actually, it's more like the flu, and I, I really feel faint. I, I've got a temperature of 102, and, uh, and the doctor gave me a prescription, you see, but now I can't get it because I can't get down to the drugstore. And, oh, yes, the doctor's out of town, so the pharmacy can't possibly call his office. Now, how's that? Oh, Sheila, that's terrible. Can't you get someone else to help? Someone in the building? Well, the only person who might be able to help is Jill, and I hope you're not suggesting that I get involved with her. Oh, no, no. Uh, look, Sheila, I'd really like to help you, but... Uh, well, great, listen, I'm, I'm cooking lunch. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can. Well, how can you possibly refuse Sheila? I mean, how can you refuse your, your wonderful friend Sheila? Lying in her bed of pain, 102 degrees? Oh, you poor thing. Well, uh, Sheila, I guess I better come right over. Terrific. I'll try to make it about noon. Is that all right? That's perfect. The quiche Lorraine will be finished about quarter past. Okay, Sheila, I really gotta go now. Now, you take care of yourself. All right. Oh, listen, I will. And I'll keep nice and warm slaving over a hot stove. Frank, uh, do you know where Maeve is? No, I don't. Why? You got a problem? Yeah, Sheila's got this terrible flu, and she can't go out of the house, and she's got this prescription that she has to have filled, and I don't know what to do about little John. Oh, Mom will stay with him. Yeah. I, I wish I didn't have to go. Well, Sheila's been so much help to us, I guess it's the least you can do. Finished. Stop worrying. Little John's gonna be okay. Pick you up at seven? Sure. I've got a busy day today, but uh, 
I'll be looking forward to dinner. Me too. I got a real busy day ahead of me also. Hot, sexy, bachelors. Oh, I like the sound of that. <laughs> are up for auction. He's hot. Just saying. This week. <laughs> it's you. Will you see who's dating who? I'm not just bidding. I intend to win. Watch All My Children weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 8 on SoapNet. We don't swim in soda. Artificial colors don't rain nourishment down from the sky. And kids don't jump into pools of high fructose corn syrup or play in fountains of sugar on a hot summer day. Water is the pure choice for your mind and body. So drink better, live better, embrace the pure life. Nestle Pure Life. When makeup alone doesn't give you younger looking skin, it's time for a primer that does. New Rock Brilliance Primer with ePulse. Applied under makeup, it instantly smooths out wrinkles. 95% of women saw a difference. New Rock Brilliance Anti-Aging Primers. <laughs> Isn't Easter fun, Red? <laughs> Not from my perspective. This marriage is a farce. Now that she's an abbot... I'm joining Abby in her lawsuit. Let the battle begin. We're going to war. The Young and the Restless, tonight at 7 on SoapNet. You know that Shane could die from an asthma attack? This week, a high school bully... You're too stooped to even breathe right. ...goes too far. <sighs> then her ex was gunned down. A shooter is a professional. But was it the new man in Blair's life? What are you doing here? Watch One Life to Live, weekdays on ABC and weeknights at 9 on SoapNet. Now, Maeve, I don't want any of your comments. Oh, you Please. don't, do you? <laughs> well, you're going to get some. What do you think you're doing, man? I'm trying to get myself back into condition. Uh but look, Maeve, you want a husband who's uh, handsome and young, looking like all the ads say? Well, I'm not about to dye my hair, so I, uh, I thought I'd get myself back in shape. Uh -huh. hmm? <laughs> That's very funny. But it seems to me that I've got a man who's bordering on senility. Look, I put it up. I'm not about to take it down so you can save your breath. John, I will not have that thing in my kitchen. It's not taking up any room. Oh, not much it isn't. John, what will the neighbors say? Well, everybody will think you've gone crazy. Now, since when are you concerned about what the neighbors say? I'm concerned about what they say when they're right. Can you tell me what that thing is going to do? Would you just tell me that, please? I certainly can. It's going to sharpen my time and, and my reflexes. That's oh. what it's going to do. So that the next time you can break Finelli's neck into pieces, I suppose. Look, honey, that's not it at all. I just uh, want to be prepared in case there is a next time. Prepared? You talk like the man attacked you in some kind of a dark alley. I believe it was you that swung first, was it not? Maeve, I swear, I have no intention of picking a fight with Finelli anymore. No intention whatsoever. Mm, oh, yes, and we do know where your intentions lead, don't, don't we? What is the matter with you? Provoked me. You weren't there. You didn't hear him. What he said I, about Mary was inexcusable. I don't want to hear anything about it. You hit him, he hit you, only he connected. If your pride has been hurt, I'm just, I can't feel sorry for you. Just fine. That's perfect. Whose side are you on, anyway? I don't care much for either of you at the moment. John, don't you realize if one more incident like this, and you're going to confess about Mary, just forget about her. Mary's coming home. She moved out of Finelli's, didn't she? That's something. Well, isn't it? <sighs> Don't get your hopes up. She's mad at him. It doesn't mean that she won't go back to him. You think she will? Oh, how would I know? This family seems to be capable of all kinds of craziness. Oh, come if on. someone had told me I'd get up in the morning and find a contraption like that hanging on my wall in my kitchen. Oh. I do, I'll tell you something. Mary was very friendly on the phone last night. Oh. Was she now? Yeah, she was a little subdued on account of all the excitement. Oh, well, I'm not the least bit surprised. Yeah. I want her back. I mean, it's... 
It's not right for her to be out in the city all of a sudden like this. I mean, if she wants her own apartment, that's fine. Let her do it the sensible way. Take her time, look around, find something nice. What's the big rush? Sean, it's not in our hands. Well, why is he messing it up like this? I wasn't referring to the Lord, I was referring to Mary. Oh. Look. In my opinion, the less we say, the better. Let Mary make her own decisions. The whole thing will be settled much quickly. That is what is true, and that's the way it is. Yeah. All right. I believe you. It's, it's just that I don't think... You don't, don't think... trust her. I do. I trust her. It's... It's just that... Contraption out of my kitchen, aren't you? Oh, you are the most stubborn man in God's green earth. Next, take a trip to the Upper West Side on Ryan's Hope. Later, spend some time in Genoa City with the Young and the Restless, only on SoapNet. It might be time to consider bankruptcy. Bankruptcy? This Wednesday on an all-new Being Erica. We do what we need to do to stay alive. Everyone has secrets. This is a big opportunity, Erica. Okay, what's the catch? The opportunity is confidential. Everyone has something to hide. I have a solution. Whatever it takes to win. But when everyone's out for themselves... You have to face reality. How can you even do this? Who can you trust? What the hell is going on? Well, this isn't a game, Erica. Being Erica. All new this Wednesday at 11, only on SoapNet. If you're a diabetic and currently trying to lose weight, please stay tuned to this important message. A market trial offer is starting now for a revolutionary breakthrough in weight loss called glucosalin, and you are eligible to try it free for 30 days. We are looking for callers to receive a free trial, so call immediately 1-800-620-3352. If the line is busy, please keep trying. Clinical studies of the key ingredient in glucosalin have shown this ingredient to be effective in accelerating weight loss. What's even more impressive is that it also supports healthy blood sugar metabolism at the same time. And now this new formula is being released to the general public. And you're eligible to try glucosalin right now for 30 days. Finally, clinically proven weight loss and healthy blood sugar metabolism in one pill. Call immediately to find out how to receive your free 30-day trial. 1-800-620-3352. 1-800-620-3352. If the line is busy, please keep trying. Being a mother can be very rewarding. Motherhood changes everything. Just ask the women of The View. The biggest lesson any child teaches their mother is it's not all about you. I fully believe in mother's intuition. I know when my baby just needs to get on my lap and he needs some mother love. With your children, you learn diplomacy. But with adults, you have to practice it. It's a mom's view. The trick is to have one less tantrum than your child. The View, weekdays only on ABC. Jake? No one saw it coming. Jake! Jake's going straight to surgery. Come on, Jake. No one was prepared for this. Jake suffered a catastrophic head injury. He's gone. No, 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 no. He's gone. No. This week on General Hospital. <laughs> A sorrow so great. I'm Jake Weber's real father, and I barely knew him. It goes beyond words. I'm so sorry. <laughs> and as a family grieves. We're the ones with the hole left in our lives. The search for the killer begins. What kind of a person gets a little kid and keeps on going? We've compiled a list of suspects. What if I hit him? You know the drivers, don't you? What if it was me? I hit Jason's little boy? We found the driver of the car. Oh, no, this is crazy. Now, only one question matters. Who hit my son? General Hospital, weekdays on ABC, weeknights on SoapNet. Sheila. Oh, I have made a truly miraculous recovery. I'm almost cured. Almost, but not quite. No? No, it's my temperature. You see, it just keeps rising. Gee, that's a real bad problem. Well, however, it's a problem to which there is a solution. Now, you see, I've been reading this book on home remedies, 
and it's it's full of choice little nuggets of wisdom collected by a lost tribe of aborigines and in it i found the most wonderful cure you can imagine for a fever really what is it i'll show you come on give me okay A hair ribbon. <laughs> oh, yes. A hair ribbon is very essential. Unless, of course, you don't happen to be wearing one. And the ritual is always accompanied by native music. Hear the music? Now, <laughs> now the procedure is as follows. The person with the fever approaches a maiden and very, very carefully undoes all of her garments. They are to be boiled and eaten later. Roger. Oh, you'll get the hang of it. Now uh, I know that you'll have no trouble at all. Oh, Roger. Hmm? I shouldn't be doing this. Mm, Delia. Uh, you shouldn't even be here. That's right. But you are here. And you are the most beautiful woman and fascinating person I know. And you don't know how much I need to tell you that. Roger, believe it or not, Frank asked me out to dinner. That's very impressive. So he was able to tear himself away for the evening, was he? I bet you're uh, pretty flattered. Don't. All right, I'm sorry. Are you all right? No. No, I'm not all right. I've got lots of troubles. You mean about Seneca? There's a whole list of troubles. Seneca, Jill, my father, the hospital, and you. Delia. I am seriously in love with you. No. No, you couldn't be. Why not? Because you just Because couldn't be. you don't deserve it, because nobody else really ever has been. It is possible to love you. Believe me, I know. How do you know? Because it hurts. Oh. You see that bottle? That's how much scotch I drank last night, and I couldn't even sleep. You don't even look like you were drinking. I didn't even feel it. I just lay there, thinking about you. And little John. And Frank. Hey, stop this. Don't you understand? I was torn up inside when I saw you and Frank together in the hospital. I mean, at one minute, I was the strong, protecting male with you and the baby. And the next minute, I was wiped off the face of the earth by the appearance of a man who had no right to be there. Roger, he has a right. All right, all right, I understand. He has a right. Of course he does. And if you ask this community, he's got a list of rights as long as my arm. But not if you ask me. I mean, what has he done for you lately, Dee? What has he done for my sister? He goes through life trampling people right and left, and still, to everybody, he's the golden hair boy from Riverside. Now, how does he get away with it? How? I don't know! I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Dee. I don't mean to yell at you. You're the last person in the world that I want to yell at. I'm what? sorry. I, I understand. Sometimes I feel the same way. I guess you have. I don't want you to be jealous of Frank. And I don't want you to be mad on my account. Do you really have to go? No. No, I, I can stay a little while. In Port Charles, revenge is a priority, relationships are disposable, and good medical care is a necessity. Keep up with this fast-paced city with an all-new episode of General Hospital, weeknights at 10 on SoapNet.